and then we'll go live on Facebook. Now, we have had some problems with the APIs with Facebook not working properly. Shock. That's why we do two recordings. So it's loading. So Kate, I am not being rude to you when I go on my, my phone because I like to go see and, and be active on the comments if it's going to post to Facebook. Wait, okay. come on with it, Facebook. Establishing the static connection. That's what it said. I want to go in a page. It's not a group, isn't it a page? Get seen, get leads. Won't it show up? Ah, that's interesting. Well, we'll go on my timeline, I guess. We hope. Preparing. Please work today. It's always recording all the stuff I'm doing, too. Fetching that video stream. That's what it says. It says it's fetching. Which I'm probably live right now and people are laughing because that's usually how it works. There we go. It's done fetching. <laughs> hey, Kate, thanks for your patience. For those of you that follow me, you know this is just who Brenny is. So, guys, if you don't know who I am, I'm Brenny Larson and this is the Get Seen, Get Lead Summit. We are a group of uh, global uh, digital marketers that work together around the world and we decided to put on a little presentation because everybody has their own little tip or trick that they can help you to be able to get seen and to get leads and when you get leads what do you do well, you build your list and when you build your list then you have a distribution center you have people that you can sell your products and your coaching to so that's what this is about to help you and for us to get seen so you can start working with us so today we've got Kate Pullen from Spain in the house. Whoop, whoop. What would be a shout out? You know, salute. I know, like in Italy, they're like ciao, ciao bella, Brandy. What? What Spain? Just hi. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Jane's laughing. Okay, guys. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background in case you don't know Kate. So she's a digital marketer, but she's really passionate and she likes helping people. That's why we get along because that's the path I'm on too, sister. How can we help people? So when I said, will you do this summit? She's like, right on. I'm going to bust through my fears and go out globally with Brenny online. <laughs> you can tell she's a little bit shyer than I am. Okay, well, she realized that there's one common factor that all businesses starting online have and that they really need to nail down. And we know there's a lot of entrepreneurs and small businesses that really have no structure and they don't know what to do. Well, Kate teaches what is called the four pillars of sales, and this includes product, your brand, your price, and of course, your ideal clients. Now, if one of these elements is missing, guess what? There's a disconnect, and then things just won't happen and flow the way you want them to. So today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about how to find the people you know who will love the products and the services, your customers and your clients. That's what we're going to talk about today, because when you can find them, then they will be repeat customers and they will follow you. I'm telling you, I got some people who've been following me for like 10 years. <laughs> I'm like, what? So in her interview today, we're going to talk about your ideal customer or client, whatever you like to call it. And at the heart of every successful online business is your client. While this is something we all know we should be laser focused on, the fact is many people starting out, they just don't know who their ideal client is. I am going to totally agree with that from a coaching perspective. Is there like, who's your, who's your ideal client? What's your niche? Everyone? No, that's not right, is it, Kate? Sorry, guys, there's Grandma's clock a dinging. It's always interesting on these lives. Anyway, guys, we're going to jump into the interview as soon as Grandma's clock is done ringing. And the first thing we're going to talk about is why your ideal client and customer matters, why it matters to you, and why it matters to your business. So, Kate, thank you for that Woo, interesting and entertaining intro i'm gonna let you take it away uh first thing is for those that don't know you can you just give them a little bit of background how did you start this journey into the digital marketing world 
Well, um, I started my career many, many years ago, and uh, I was working in marketing um, in a, a real marketing company. And uh, the, the company that I work for, that we sold uh, data and data analysis on behalf of grocery companies. And uh, it, it was my business, and I grew the business to uh, multiple million dollars. And uh, I got to a stage in my life where I met my husband, although he wasn't my husband then. Um, and I had an opportunity to just do something completely different. So I was faced with sort of like a crossroads. So I either go on and stay in the corporate world and go down the corporate lane, you know, which is great, uh, or we throw everything into the air and, uh, and, and start something new. So this was in the year 2000, and since then that we've been making our living online. So uh, the very first thing that we did that brought in money online was an e-commerce store. And this was before PayPal. Um, this was before everything. I mean, that, that was just shortly after the dinosaurs. That was and a lot of work, wasn't it, back then? It, it was an immense amount of work. Every time I wanted to list a new product, I had to give it to Ian, who would then write the code. When people wanted to buy things from us, they had to send us checks. <laughs> so, are those checks? Check? Um, so, so we, we've, been doing, we, we've been doing sort of work online one way or another for, uh, for, for a long time. For a long time. And then um, I started, uh, I, I do a lot of writing, and I, I started uh, a, a career in writing content writer. And I realized uh, then that if I wanted people to read what I was writing, I needed to understand how to get it in front of them because it's all very well me writing the most entertaining piece ever. Um, but if no one else is going to read it, then you know, I, I, I've wasted my time. So I was fortunate enough to be writing for About.com, who were owned by the New York Times. And they took um, training very seriously and, and in ensuring that we knew what we were doing. So uh, I had my eyes open then to um, what we need to do uh, to, to be seen online. And then I've taken that and grown from it and I've taken my own experiences and I've continued learning. And uh, that I now sort of dedicate myself pretty much to, to helping other people um, be seen online, which is why today is such a great, uh, a great a, opportunity. It is, it's great. And guys, you know, we know that it, it can take a while when you get started that everybody has this great dream of being an entrepreneur, all this free time and money just rolling in. But that's one reason we do these summits, so you can understand that there are steps and procedures and things you need to do to, to be able to get in front of the people. If you can't get in front of the people, you have nobody to sell to. It's kind of like I said, you have the best restaurant in the world, the best food in the world, and it's so beautiful, but it's in the middle of the desert and there's no signs, so nobody even knows it's there. That could be you and your business. That's why we're doing this, so we can show you all these little tips and tricks on how you can get seen, like live streaming here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why your ideal client and customer matters besides you have someone to sell to. Well, uh, as, as you mentioned in the, in, in the introduction, I mean, there's, there's four essential elements to a sale. The right product has to be sold to the right person at the right price from the right brand. So very often we get the product, we get the price, we get the brand, and we sort of forget the target market. And I think part of the reason for that is today it's so easy to start online. If I was investing thousands of pounds in setting up a shop like, and, and, and you know, all that sort of thing, of course I'd be looking to see who my target market was. I'm not going to set up my cute little uh, boutique, high-end boutique in the low-end part of town. Right. You know, I'd be researching that. But because it's a case of online, plug in your computer, boom, you're done. Uh, that we're, we're not inclined to think so much about uh, who it is that we're, we're talking to. And if we don't really, really know who it is who's going to be our ideal clients, then we're sort of wasting our time um, for a start. We're wasting our money because we're advertising to the wrong people. We're getting demoralized because we're getting negative feedback from people who are never going to be our clients. But also we're missing some really important things as well, because if we know who our ideal client or our target market is, we then hear from, from those people as to what they need from us. So they're almost doing our job for us because they're telling us their problems, they're telling us their pain points. So we then can 
know how better to serve them by creating the right product that's going to to, to help them uh, solve their need. Kate, that's huge right there. And that's one of my things. I'm a person who gets excited when I read through and see people have problems. I'm like, yes, solution. I have a solution for you. But guys, that's a great thing about when you have groups and when you can read through stuff and you work one-on-one -on -one with clients is you find out exactly what, because we think you want, like I can tell you so many teachers that think they know what their students want and they create this big course and they're not interested at all. So that's what's great about you're listening to your clients, but you're also able to guide your clients that they have to get seen. Because how many people have beautiful websites, Kate? They're pretty. They're pretty lonely. <laughs> Does that make sense? Great, Lindsay, I'm glad that we're making sense. That, that, that's one of my goals today. But to me, I do uh, feng shui and law of attraction. And to me, what when you uh, get your ideal client, that is just telling the energy where to go and what you're looking for. That is your target. Like when you shoot an arrow, you have to have a target to hit or where is it going to go? To me, that's how I think about it. When you say ideal client, it's like, okay, there's the target. Now I know who I'm going to hit. So now I can come up with these different solutions because there's not just one way to get a client, is there? <laughs> there's many. So, okay, let's so go on then. So we're talking out right now about the client and the customer and why it really matters in business and why so many businesses and entrepreneurs do not have their ideal client. I think it's because they, A, never followed a mentor, took a coaching program, just kind of jumped in and like you said, didn't really think about it because you can literally turn your computer on, build a website from a template and send an email out and be posting the same day. But like you said, the missing part is who's coming to visit that. So what are the steps? How can we get people, how can we find our niche, our right clients and get them to our website? What are some steps and tips that people can do today? The, um, so what we need to do is we need to identify the people who are going to most closely align with our own brand values. Um, so obviously we need to have those tightly in place as well. And of course that not, not everyone does, but our, our brands need to stand for something we need, we need to have brand values. And when we know what our brand values are, then we can look for people who will be sharing similar, similar values. So for example, uh, if I was selling uh, vegan artisan soap, then I'm obviously going to be targeting people where veganism is a value they hold dear. They're going to shop in, in artisan shops, not in Walmart. Um, so I have my values and I'm looking to find people, uh, people with similar values. So, so I, you're not going to target the rib cook off at the state fair to sell the vegan product no. to? No, 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 you're not. It seems funny, but people do this, Kate, and you know it's true. That's why I'm snickering a little bit. And it's like, you placed an ad where? For what? <laughs> and also, people forget that um, we're not invisible. And uh, I cannot, um, you know, I, I cannot overemphasize how important it is to think about how we're seen by our potential target market. So again, if I'm a, a vegan artisan soap maker, uh, I don't want to be seen on Facebook tucking, tucking into a burger. Um, if I'm a, a heart-centered entrepreneur, then I don't want to be seen chasing the red Ferraris. You know, that, that, that people need to think about, it's a two-way two thing. I'm looking for people who are going to like what I have to offer, but also those people need to, to like me too, that, that I, I need to, to represent my brand values. And as coaches, and as entrepreneurs, people where we're on, on, you know, we're the ones in front of our business, then we need to be, we need to have absolute clarity and make sure that we're showing people what, what we want them to, to see. It's a two way thing. I yeah, think that's, that's a really big thing that you just said about being transparent and being who you are. And it's a, it's a two way street. So as coaches, we want to attract the right students. And I've seen this happen and you will not succeed if you chase after people and try to make them like you. They're not meant to be your students. I have students, they just love me. They, they, they invest in everything I do because I've proven myself over and over with my coaching abilities 
and my classes. So it's a two way street as far as find the right mentor. If you want quiet, you want Kate. If you want a firecracker, you want me. We're like the yin and the yang. Now we can get along great and we can work well together. But if you're a person like have a hectic life, you may want someone a little more gentle like Kate. That's why guys never take offense if someone doesn't follow you. You're just not vibing with them. So it's important to check your coaches and mentors out. That's why we do this too. Because we're all coaches and mentors. Yay. Kate's like, go. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so you said uh, about how do, we, how do we actually find them? Well, I mean, you said earlier about looking in groups and listening in groups. And uh, one of the, you know, one of the absolute um, most important things that we can do is listen and not talk. And if we can get into a group, um, I mean, I've spoken about uh, artisan soap, but if I was a, um, if I, if, if I was a, a teacher of foreign language, for example, um, then if I get into groups of, of language learners and, and listen to the problems that they're having, listening to what they're saying, and then look at the people who I am uh, resonating with, who I think, yes, you know, this is a person who I can connect with. Then I look at their profile. I see the sort of things on their profile that that. I mean, you put on your dear stalker hat and you do a bit of Sherlock Holmesing here. Yes, so, you do. So you you. I mean, you get a bit stalky, really. Uh, so you you look at their profile. You look at the groups they're in and make a note of uh, of all of these things. And then you can really start to look for the common factors. So uh, these are people that are language learners, and they also they all like. Um, modern films or, or something you, you can you can see the connection so you can start to build up a picture because we want to build up a wider picture of just the fact they like my products mm -hmm. um so just going back to artists and soap because that is one i know um so they're likely also to like craft beer so uh i, I know they're going to like <laughs> <laughs> they're going to like craft beer. They're going to like artisan cheese. That, that, so you, you can start to build up a picture of these people and you know who they are. You know the cheese things that they like. Cheese and beer. Oh, yeah, girl. I'm happy <laughs> right now. See, I like that group. I like that bitch. So example, Kate, like it, this is very important for those of you watching right now, what she said is look at your Facebook profile. And I went through with uh, Craig one time and went through part of his course on that. And it's like, what are you saying to people when they look at your personal profile? You go to my personal profile, you can tell right away who I am. I love the outdoors. I got pictures of the lakes. You can tell I hang out with my parents in their 80s and 90s. You can see I love my little nephew who's five. You can see I kayak all the time. I'm always got wildlife pictures. So you can see if you are a corporate, you know, briefcase, you know, Ferrari driving, you know, sell broken glass to your grandma person, we probably ain't going to get along. I'm not going to want you in my group and you're not going to want me because I'm going to be so country and casual. I'm going to drive you crazy. So that's why it's good to check people out. And Kate, I think this is a big thing people don't do. I see this happen often. They get so wound up and they get in the energy of something like watching a live stream and then they never go check that person out and where they would see, man, that guy hates dogs. I love dogs. I, I can't hang with him. You know, he's mean. I saw him in a bar on that video yelling at that little old lady. I don't like those kind of people. So due diligence here as far as working together in a joint venture or being on the same team or even referring people, do your due diligence because it's your life and your business and you want to hook up with those you like. Don't ever chase anybody. You'll regret it. Promise. You'll go, no, I got them. <laughs> Okay, so there's key steps to finding this right demographic for your products and your services. We talked a little bit about you can go into Facebook groups. How else do you find these right people? Um, Pinterest is uh, a, a great resource. So um, if I was, uh, I, everything, uh, Pinterest gets overlooked uh, because we're inclined to think of it as a place for sharing recipes and pictures of our babies. Um, but uh, but so today it, it's much more of a, of a search engine, really. It's a visual search ah. engine. And it's, it's a, a, a visual representation of a, a lot of the Google search results. And uh, if, you, if you go in there and if you start looking at what people are sharing and the boards that they're collating, uh, you can see how, the, you know, how, pe how 
people in your target market are perceiving different things. So for example, uh, if I was a coach and uh, if I was selling um, uh, Instagram courses or something, if I go into, if I go into Pinterest and I, if I look at uh, Instagram courses, I do a search and I'll see people have posted information about them. I then look at the boards and I don't want to look for boards that are called Instagram courses. I want to look at boards of things like um, things to do, uh, things I must learn, that sort of thing. So then I can see all the different things that that type of person, that that person is, is, is wanting to learn in the same place. So I'm getting a better idea of, of the, the things that drive them and, and the, the motivation behind them. That's really, it's really good for services, but it's really, really good for uh, products because you can actually start piecing together a, a look uh, a, of how your person is, is going to look, the things you can make a, like a, a visual board. Yeah. And uh, I suggest making a, a secret board um, and then pinning everything that relates to, to, to your person. I'm going to so agree. Then, Lindsay says very clever. I'm a non Pinterest person because honest to God, my sister, you know, when we were young, I couldn't get her to do any crafts nothing couldn't get her and I'm always out there doing everything now all of a sudden she's in her 50s and she has all these brilliant ideas which I already know because I grew up doing them and she's constantly sending me Pinterest stuff and it's like you know you guys know me I don't have time to go out and build I, oh that's nice I'm going to take that crate and make a, a potting bench well you know I got a stump out there that's my pot bench type thing so I never realized Pinterest had like wow you can go market there and that's a very clever way of marketing. That's a good course right there. That's a good class. Even a one-day class on that, Kate. Pinterest. Uh, one, of the, one of the advantages, if, if you make a secret board, um, again, sort of when you, when, you know, when you know your person, when you have that person really, really tightly defined, you should be able to shut your eyes and see them. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can shut your eyes and if you can see that person, then when you're writing, you're writing to that person. You're not just writing a generic email or, you know, dear anyone. You're writing dear John, but in a good way. Um, so if you have a, um, a, a private Pinterest board, then if, if you're stuck for inspiration, you can just look at your board and you can, you can start in visualizing again who this person is, who, who your particular person is that you want to, to work with. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's good on a couple of accounts, but it is good to just to be able to, Sometimes just be able to remind yourself that it's a real person. And when we're talking about target market, it's not some sort of like generic lump of demographic. It's actually a real person. You know, Kate, I got to tell you something funny you're going to laugh about is when I went and did my ideal person, her name was Kate and she looked like you. She had short, red, curly hair and her name was Kate and she was from a different country. I didn't pick Spain, but you know, that's who I would when in my feng shui practice, that was the person and whenever I'd get off track, I'd pull that picture up of that person and say, that's right. That's what she wanted. And it kept me on track on creating the programs they wanted and going after the right students, you know, instead of you can waste a lot of time thinking you're going after the right people and you get frustrated because if it's a lot of problems, guys, I always believe this. If things don't work out, you're meant to take a different path and try something else. So if you keep trying the same to get the same clients and those clients don't work out, you're going to want to do a shift over. Hey man, go have some fun. I believe it's supposed to be fun. That's one of my roles, Kate, going to Pinterest and creating a board. Well, that's a kind of uh, little work I like to do <laughs> instead of one pixel up on a funnel. Like <laughs> Shelly's like, it's okay. She's doing all right. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about some tips you could give them. So that's a great tip that they could go to Pinterest. And what, what's another tip that you can help them? Like, I can tell you from many of the coaching programs, and I've been in coaching programs where that's all they did was figure out who their tribe was. And people after eight weeks still had problems figuring out their tribe. What is something that you know uh, works pretty well when people are so confused? Because when you can get your target market and you can get that person in your mind, it's much easier to create and to do courses and coach isn't it because it's like you know who you're talking to i'm talking to kate <laughs> uh I mean, sometimes uh some of the most simple ways uh that are are the best so uh just um uh doing questionnaires and doing polls 
and uh, saying the sort of things that uh, that drive people and that don't don't drive people. Um, a um, a question: a qu If if you're allowed to put a, a poll into a um, into a big group, a big group, then uh, that could be a really good way to, uh, to to get some idea of what drives people and what doesn't. And then, yeah, like I said, just speaking to people, interviewing people. So if, if you can find one person, if they would be prepared to spend uh, 10 minutes with you and you can actually find the things that really, really matter to them, then you can start fleshing out um, from, from there. Because we need, we need our, our, our target market, we need our ideal client to be sort of extreme we need them to be the people that are passionate uh, yes, about we want passion so guys what she's saying is it's simple like let's say you're in a group or just posting on facebook you say i'm looking for three people um i'm doing some marketing research for my company if you could help me out it'll take 10 minutes and then you talk to them and you see what they're thinking i mean it, it really it works out pretty well now what i i was i'm in feng shui which i guess some people still don't know what it is but I've been in it from the start when it came to America. My master brought it over in 86. But I needed to know, because there's no books on it, how I could help people what they wanted to know. And I wanted to be specific because it's a very in-depth uh, topic I've been studying for over 20 years. And I sent surveys out. And how I did it was I asked them. I sent an email out and I said, hey, man, can you help me create the courses you want you know, to learn about? And I gave them multiple choices. And then I gave a paragraph. You would not believe how I got over a hundred back and I just had the free survey monkey. I'm like, oh man, I got to upgrade. Well, okay, to get this information. And they would tell me exactly what they wanted. By the end of that survey, I knew how much money they wanted to spend, how long they wanted their courses. What, and we know the top three is always love, money, and health. I mean, it's like I didn't have to ask them that one. But by doing that survey, what I said is, hey guys, I'm going to draw a lucky person who gets a free consult with me and I'll draw your floor plan out for you. And I think that's why I got so so many, but it told me exactly what they wanted, Kate. And then after that survey, I also had everybody's phone number I could call and say, hey, I think I'm going to do a new course. Are you interested in this? So I'm like high on the survey list. That's how that and live streaming is how I built my complete list of over 10,000. Just those couple little things. That's it. So, okay. We have to define our target market closely. Is this correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, 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 we do. And often it's a lot closer than people think. So um, I've got an example. I was just going to say, do you have an example by any chance? Girl. So I've got um, it, earrings, earring one, earring two. Now, someone might think that, okay, so my target market is jewelry. No, that's too big. I'll narrow it down. My target market is earrings, but oh, it buyers of earrings. But you see, there's two very, very different types of shopper here. Right, right. So uh, I've got one um, bright and colourful. I've got the other, uh, which is a diamond. But, uh, you know, which could be a diamond. Oh, my God, it looks real. Can you get it and see if it scrapes a mirror? <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, it's like a many thousands of pounds that someone might spend on. So it, it's going to be it's going to be two different, different types of people. But so when I'm trying to narrow these down, Right. Uh, I actually need to, uh, it's pretty obvious that this is going to be someone fun and, and flirty. This is going to be someone elegant. And, but more than that, why are they wanting to buy? You know, what are the motivating factors? So I want to know, so the person who's buying this earring um, will be somebody um, that they do like colorful jewelry, but they probably like things that are light and easy to wear on the ear. Um, that they uh, will have a style that's quite distinctive. Um, they will probably be uh, an older demographic. There'll be a demographic where comfort is important. These are lightweight earrings. Um, so we, we're getting a, a look of the sort of person. I mean, actually, in this instance, it's my mother-in-law. That, that she, if I shut my eyes, she, she was the one that is buying these earrings. Um, the, the other one, then, uh, this is someone who's going to be more conservative, that they're going to, uh, they're going to have a, a, a greater um, value on um, elegance and... Um, I almost see like a businesswoman, a sophisticated businesswoman going out. 
But yeah, when you were seeing the other one, I'm like, oh, I'm seeing women in their 50s and 60s. And, and we're just like kind of really like who we are, whether other people like us or not. And we're comfortable with, you know, we want comfortable shoes now. We don't want stilettos anymore. You know, we want comfortable earrings. We want to be comfortable, but still have fun and look good. So yeah, that's a great example because people go earrings. Okay, the earring market. Well, there is completely two different styles right there. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, okay, let's go on here. Do some people find the whole concept of niching down counterintuitive? What do you mean by that? Why would they be a counterintuitive? Well, because we all want our products to be seen by as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. So why in the world would I niche down from a potential market of, of millions or billions of people to uh, a tiny market of 2000? Uh, well, because that tiny market of 2000, I'm going to be 2000 people are actually going to buy from me um, rather than have whatever the balance is of million people who, who, are, who are never going to, to buy from me. But we want, like, if, if we've created something, be it a product or a service or a course, we want that to be in front of as many people as possible. So it's, it feels wrong to us. You, you know, it's it like, we, we have to train our mind to feel happy when people unsubscribe from our newsletters. Yes. I remember when people first used to unsubscribe from my newsletter, I used to think, oh, my God, they hate me. Now uh, you're like, yes. Yeah, now I think, yeah, great, go. <laughs> um, so it's, it's the same when we're thinking about um, our target market. It sort of feels counterintuitive to actually you sort of think, well, maybe I'll just wipe out a little bit more and include people who might be interested. But no, particularly when you're starting out, get it tight and get a group of people who are going to love, love, love you. And then from there, they will then refer you to others and they'll help you develop your product. And they will refer you out to people. And this is Kate, where I'd rather have a list of 200 people that buy from me than a list of 10,000 that don't. Because A, you're going to pay a lot more money, you know, sending out emails and trying to cater to them. And they're always going to be the ones, you know, I don't like the way you talk Minnesota and you need to talk slower. You need to chill out. No, I don't. You need to go find somebody else. So always be yourself because you're going to revert back to it. And plus, you want to be the unique you. You don't want to try to act like someone else. It's great to get ideas from them and to model things they do. But, you know, like, okay, for example, law of attraction. You know, Bob Proctor didn't invent that. John Asaroff didn't invent that. They're taking these tools that other people came up with and they're presenting them in their personality. And that's why people go with those certain thought leaders. So don't copy people, model them, but always be yourself. So, um, yeah, this is interesting. Are we our own target market? Right, okay. Um, so, I am, um, I'm at odds with about just about everyone else on this because uh, I say that we can never be our target market. And most people will say that we can be. The reason why I say that we can't be our target market, and I think it's quite important that we acknowledge this, is because we're actually doing what we're doing. So uh, the sheer fact that we are doing the teaching or doing the making or, or uh, giving the product um, means that we're not the same as the people that we're providing it to. And one of the reasons why it's important to acknowledge that is that it, we need to step back and say, okay, maybe we were like, maybe we were our target market before we started on this journey, but now we're not. And if we think of ourselves as being our target market, this is where we start to have doubts over the uh, price that we put on our services and things because we think, well, I wouldn't pay that. Well, of course I wouldn't pay it because I can do it. Right. Um, but but we're, we're, we're forgetting, we're, we're forgetting. So we, we allow the self-doubt to come in because that we're thinking that we are our target market, whereas, uh, whereas we are not. And if we think of ourselves we're closely aligned to, that, that we share cert certain values and certain core cool features. But if we actually remember that we're not because we're the ones that can do what we do, then it will actually help to get rid of those self-doubts, which, which can be a killer. And you know, Kate, this is part about getting out of your comfort zone, because I can tell you from the feng shui perspective, I paid tens of thousands of dollars, lots and lots and lots of money studying with experts and mentors and masters. And then when I went to do it, I didn't think I was worthy of charging that amount and how it came by default. I'm not going to lie to you. I was doing a joint venture with this guy and he didn't understand feng shui, but he put three different price levels. Now I'm going to tell you, it was a lot of work. 
but most of the people got the thousand dollar price level and I'd never offered it. I had offered the $200 price level, the $150 price level, the $100 price level, because that's what I thought in my mind I was worthy of. That's not what they saw me worthy of. They saw me worth 10 times that and even more. Then they actually contacted me and wanted to do some one-on-one. -on -one and I was like, gee, I wonder what I charged for that. I just charged them a thousand. Oh, 5,000. So it's like when you get out of your own way and out of your own comfort zone, people really want what you have. And I try to look at it. What did I do? I spend money on coaching. I spend money on mentors. I invest in those that can guide me to get to the next level. So that's exactly it right there. You are not your customer. And at first I'm like, well, that's no offense, Kate. I'm kind of, that's kind of dumb. Yeah, you are. You're in a niche market. You're teaching it. And then you explain it. It's like, oh, no, Bernie, you're wrong. Did you hear that? Is that recorded? Bernie's wrong. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. I wish I had that mindset when I had my travel company, Lindsay said. I used to think I wouldn't pay, that they wouldn't pay me that. That's the exact truth, guys. And this is what we talk about um, in law of attraction, in universal energy and frequency is when you tell the universe, like, I can't do that, you're right. You just told them you can't do it, you know? And I love this example because I was a, a miler. I was a distance runner. And I remember I grew up in the day when nobody had broke the four minute mile because everybody said you couldn't do it. One guy did it. After that, I mean, hundreds of people have done the, the four minute mile. That's a perfect example of believing somebody's bullshit. Do you want to believe their bullshit? Or do you want to be successful? I want to be successful. So I'm not listening to those limitations. Okay, so we are not our own target market. Um, so once we've defined this target market, so okay, we know, let's go with the earrings. So we know we want your mother-in-law, she's got a little bit of fun going on and wants those light earrings. So then what's the next step? What do we do now that I've defined a target market? Well, this is, this is where the magic really starts to happen and, and all your hard work actually starts to pay off because now we know we know who that person is so as we said earlier when we're writing our emails and things that we know who it is we're talking to but importantly because we know who they are that we've been hanging out in groups with them that, that we've been listening to them we know the language that they use we know the things that are important to them the questions that they have we know the way that they phrase things and it means that we can actually then start engaging with them on a on, on a like for like basis, and this is so important. I um, I, I once did a a shop critique, a, an Etsy store critique of, of a lady who was uh, making uh, cross stitch kits, and she had beautiful, very traditional, beautiful cross stitch kits. And her photos were excellent, and her her titles were excellent. I was reading her descriptions, and I thought, there's something. I, I don't understand. So I had to work with my sister, who is an editor in a cross-stitch magazine. I said, these cross-stitching terms, because she was saying things like, uh, this cross-stitching kit is really sick. And uh, I thought, Oh, well, young people, how they like, sick means cool, because I would be going, yeah. sick. That's so, bad feng shui right there anyway. <laughs> so I, I, I said to my sister, because I thought, well, perhaps, that they, perhaps there's a whole language in, in cross-stitch that I just don't know about. But, but it wasn't. <laughs> and and the, this... So I said to this lady, I said, well, what, who's your target market? And uh, she's, you know, she knew who it was. It, it, it's going to be sort of like the people like traditional cross-stitching. So I also wondered if she, perhaps she, she was one of these, like not your grandmother's cross-stitch. But I mean, she firmly was. She is your grandmother's cross-stitching. Um, so I, I asked her what, what she was doing with her descriptions and that she, um, she'd been following someone else. Uh, who was sort of like a youngster and was using all this like dynamic um, youngster language and that she thought it would be good to put it into her, her, her descriptions and, and it was just like I just read the first one and it was just like whoa uh, it was like she'd suddenly started typing in ancient Greek or something and, and that it, it was just not going to resonate with her okay. uh, with her target market. Copy is important. <laughs> So when we, when we know who they are, then yeah, I mean, we can actually use the terms that they use and, and not scare them away with terms that they don't use. But also I mean, that we can then start to, when we know who they are, and we know the problems that they have and, and the things that are important to them, we can actually start creating products based on our target market's needs and that they can tell us what they want. And they don't need to be explicit with this. Uh, we can actually find out. So for example, if my uh, target market was uh, dog owners and um, I was 
making or selling uh, dog accessories, say, dog collars, um, then I, I need to know the sort of problems that, that, that they have, the sort of issues that's important. So one of the first places that I would go would be to go to Amazon and look at reviews on Amazon, which are two or three star reviews. Don't want to look at one star reviews because they all can be negative and, and super angry. Um, and I don't want to look at the sort of like the top reviews because they're all going to be fan reviews. I want to look at the reviews where people were happy-ish with the product. It was great, but it but. was a greater if. And I want to make a note of all those buts because that's people are telling us what they actually need from a product. The same with uh, eBay, we can get those on eBay reviews. Anywhere we can get reviews, we can get that sort of thing. Another, uh, another tip, and this, this is absolutely gold, and it's not mine, or I'd love to claim it as mine, but um, it's uh, Stu McLaren who uh, teaches the Tribe course. It's his tip. And that's to, um, to look at magazines. So in my, uh, in my dog example, if I go to Google and I type in dog magazine, go to images and look at the headlines on the covers of all those dog magazines, because generally they're solving problems. So uh, how, how, how to get your dog to do this or how to get your dog to do that. So you can then get an idea of, of the problems and the challenges and the issues um, that, uh, that, that people have. So we can, um, we, we can get a really good idea of the things that they need from us to help them uh, overcome, over the, overcome their problems. So by, by investing the time early in, in finding out who these people are, and it, you know, I know it can be dull and it can be like mm, boring, um, but if we do that, it will bear fruit further down the line because we'll have people telling us what they want, uh, what they want from us. So we can be then creating products that we know they are going to want rather than doing it the other way around, which is what so many of us do. We make yep. a product and then we go and find someone who wants to buy that product. If you actually find the people and then find the products that they want, you've actually got a ready-made audience for your, your products and life is so much easier. Yeah, and problems, you have the solution. I like it because it's like you add up all the butts, you know, like it's like I like this butt, and then there's your course. What are the butts? What are they looking for different? So this is a big thing in, in marketing, guys, uh, that I think people get wrong often because we've all gone through pain and suffering and made mistakes as entrepreneurs and put time into products that nobody wanted, is to really listen to what people want, not what you want but what they want, because they're going to tell you and how they tell you. Some people look at it and they go, man, all they ever do is complain, that person. But every one of those complaints, when you see uh, that the same complaint is coming up over and over, you just got your target market, you just got your clients and customers, and you can sell the product to them because you're, they're telling you exactly what they want. So I always look at it as kind of a good thing, even though I don't like the negative Nelly whiners, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, that's also um, a, a really good reason of why we shouldn't post in groups of people that aren't our target market, asking yes. them why people aren't buying our products. Um, and that, that, that's something that I, I find like, quite annoying. I do um, you'll see people, people say, oh, um, why, why aren't people buying my products? Would you, why, would you buy my products? And you say, well, no, I'm never going to be your target market. Or they'll say, which color should I use for my logo? And they're not talking to their target market. And like you said, it's not what we like. It's not what other people who aren't in our target market like. It's what they like. And that I've lived with some pretty, in my mind, some pretty awful logos um, and, and website designs in the past because it's not my taste. You know, right. Because I'm not my target market. It's not my taste. Um, but because I, it's going to resonate with the people who matter. So, you know, they're not going to like my pink and fluffy. Website. I can give you a very good example on this in a, in a website design is, you know, I've built all my websites, WordPress, Optimize Press, all that stuff. And then the one time I'm like, I just want somebody else to do it. The guy did not listen to me. He was trying to be nice, but he did charge me a lot of money, but he didn't listen. And I'm doing feng shui. So everything is energy and feng shui and colors mean things and, and shapes mean things. And literally on the back, like behind me, like on, on my website, it was paneling, wood paneling. First, guys, I grew up in the 70s. I don't want to see no more wood paneling. I was a carpenter's daughter. Saw that, been there, don't like it. But what it signifies is dead wood and it's dead money because wood is money in feng shui. Trees, plants, and ideas. And I said, I couldn't find him. And I said, oh my God. And my business was just dropping off. It was dying. 
with that website. And this may seem crazy to you, but that was like when I really said, I have to find the right people to work with. I can't just, and I'll say, oh, well, he's a better deal. He was a better deal. Yeah, but what saving that hundred dollars cost me thousands of dollars because I couldn't get a hold of him to change it. I didn't know what he did. And it just was not in alignment with who I am and what my brand was and everybody knew it. And it was just like crazy. So um, I have one more question for you about, so we talk about these target markets. Can you ever have more than one target market? Yes. And this is also something that's really important to recognize uh, because sometimes it can actually affect the way that we develop our business. So uh, for example, um, if I was uh, a language teacher, uh, I start off teaching beginners after a while, those beginners are going to become in intermediate. So mm -hmm. is my target market then beginners or is it intermediate learners? Well, the chances are it's then going to be both. So do I keep it then under the one brand or do I have two brands? So how do I handle, how do I handle that? So when we're actually thinking about scaling our business, we actually need to think about, particularly if we're in the coaching teaching uh, area, we need to think about how we're going to handle it as, as people develop. But also, um, I mean, going back to, uh, going back to my uh, earrings, uh, I might have two target markets there. I might have the older people and I might have like young teenagers that are just looking for um, so, something bright and colorful or, or whatever. Um, so you, you can have two target markets and you really need to think about how to handle that because if, if I've got older people and if I've got teenagers, I'm not going to be writing to them in the same way. So this is where segmenting comes in and, and that uh, we need to uh, look at segmenting our lists, segmenting our bot uh, lists. Uh, we potentially need to look at uh, having two different areas on our website, which are going to resonate with the two different uh, target markets. So whilst it is something that might not happen when we're starting out, you know, that you might have a really clearly defined target market when you're starting out, the chances are that as time goes on and as those that market develops with you, then you could well find yourself with uh, a different group of people. And you need to be able to react to that because if you don't, with the language learning, if I don't react to that and if I'm forever marketing to beginners, but my products are actually now more intermediate, I, I've actually got that uh, disconnect that right. we've been so keen to avoid uh, right at the beginning. So part of scaling means um, understanding how our target market is going to develop and how we're going to develop with them. Yeah, one of the things that I ended up doing was I had students and they would always take course and I had to keep creating courses and courses. And that's very time consuming and, and stressful because you always got to fill the courses. So what I did after like they followed me for a few years, I had <clears throat> pretty uh, smart students, you know, they've been, if you stay with us, feng shui teacher and work with them one-on-one -on -one for five years you you know a little bit of feng shui because you can't just read it in a book you need help and then i created a membership site and that way we can go and teach anything we want because these students are a higher level up and um i didn't want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching because energy is always shifting and things are always changing so i always knew they'd need more help and i always like to help them along the way before the problems show up you know, to do some of that work ahead of time to make the energy balance. So there's many solutions you can do. I still work with those, those beginners because I have all the products because I did all the slides. I did all the recordings and all you have to do is put them in a membership site or do a live stream or whatever. But that's how I scaled it. Um, how would you suggest people scale things? I mean, is that, that solution worked for me? Um, and then I could also do different coaching levels with them, like one-on-one -on -one coaching which was more too. Um, yeah, I mean, the, um, our membership sites are, uh, are always good because it, it gives you a, a connection with your, um, with your people that you probably don't have um, any other way. And always thinking about how you can take the people to the next level because a, a sale is, is almost always about taking someone from here to here. And that's, yep. uh, that's applicable whether or not it's uh, teaching or coaching or we, you're, you're taking them from this point to this point. But it's also applicable with products because people often think when, we, when we're talking about uh, fulfilling a need, we say, well, how, do it, how, you know, how does a pair of earrings fulfill a need? Well, it feels a need to feel good that mm -hmm. day. You know, I'm wearing bright earrings. I feel good. I, I, my wardrobe has got a makeover. So that has taken me from here to here. 
So uh, it, it's thinking about you've gone from here to here. So how do you go from here to here? What what other places can you uh, can you take these people to? Because we don't want it to be a one and done uh, transaction. That, that that we want it just to be the first of many. So um, knowing how we can then uh, take it through to to other products and other services and other levels is I, you uh, know key. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think that's one of the things that is really missing with entrepreneurs that they miss out on what we call the value ladder where it's a step up. Like I had one lady and you know, she didn't have a list, but she, she didn't want to listen to me. She was kind of defensive, but she, you know, I did a live stream with her and then her program she offered was like $500. I said, but they don't know you. Nobody's going to go because you say you're a psychic and believe you and go give you 500 bucks. Did you get the message ahead of time there that they're not going to do that? You know, because it's like they have, this is the no like trust thing that you hear people talk about. You know, you start small, like, you know, here Kate has a, uh, she just did a free presentation for you. She also has a free thank you gift that I'm going to show you um, how to get that in a minute too. And then for those of you that are ready to rock out, she has a special offer that's only $125 where she walks you through those four pillars and make sure your pillars are stable for you have a good foundation for your digital marketing so that you can get seen. And when you get seen and you attract the right people, then that's how you, your income increases. I have to disconnect. Okay. Sounds good. Shelly, thank you for showing up. Shelly, the diva from Builder All always shows up. Peace and love. Follow her too. She has great training. So um, I'm going to do a screen share really quick and um, we're going to go look at your speaker page. Oh, I thought I had it open. Do, 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 do. Just give me a minute. See guys, I give everybody permission to just get out there and do stuff. It's better getting the information out than thinking you have to have everything perfect. You know? Okay, Kate. Who is Kate? <laughs> Kate was my avatar. That's who Kate was. By the way, I didn't see you sign up for that course. <laughs> so guys, um, I do send emails out. Do sign up. Go to the Get Seen, Get Leads Facebook page and get in the bot. And it sends little reminders. You can easily just click there. So it takes you to Kate's page. And if you notice, the, it's the Get Seen, Get Leads .com forward slash Kate. It's the first name of the speaker. So you can read a little bit about her here, a little short bio. And then she has this awesome thank you gift. And you're just going to click on it here. And it is going to take you to her website where you can know more about your target audience. You can read through all this and you can sign up for her workshop. Bingo, bango. That's how simple that is. But let's talk a little bit about if you liked Kate's presentation and you can see she's smart and she knows what she's doing. She's put together, well, she actually didn't put it together. This is a product she sells and she's discounted it over 50% for you. So it's called the Digital Marketing for Beginners. So if you're just starting as an entrepreneur, if you've been doing it for a little bit, but you don't have a target market, you're confused a little bit about you know, what the steps are, to be running a business, then this is for you. So let's go through it really quickly. And that way, if you have questions, you can jump on and we'll answer those after the call also. So she talks a little bit about what it is to be successful online. So if you haven't been online before, there are some you know, tips and tricks and tools to learn how to do it. So this is what the course is going to be about. Now, this is a four-week course. And you correct me if I say something wrong, Kate. This is a four-week course. And she starts you off where you get to um, study on you, uh, your own to get going. I That's my personal learning style. I like to watch the video ahead of time, take my notes, and then I show up in the group and ask all the questions you can ask any of my teachers. So you're perfect for me. Maybe you manifested me and didn't know it, Kate. She's like, no. <laughs> no firecracker. <laughs> so guys, it's going to be about how to build your list, how to identify your target market. To me, that's so important. Like she said, if you're not going after the right market, you're, if you are um, trying to sell a bottle of tequila to a group of alcoholics, you're not going to be successful, guys. So that's why you want to make sure you know your target market and you're presenting it to them. Because those guys are going to be mad and say some ugly things, and then you're going to take it personal and maybe give up, and we don't want that. 
Um, she's going to go through Facebook promotions and Facebook everyday things to do. It, you don't have to be spending money all the time, do you, Kate? A lot of it is just action taking. And that's what she's good at is teaching you what action to take because we want to do money making activities, not busy making activities. She's gonna go over how to create power pages. Kate, what do you call a power page? A power page is actually um, a landing page, but I call it a power page because um, in um, like <clears throat> a landing page in, in Google Analytics is uh, the first page that somebody lands on in, um, in, in, in a website. And that doesn't really describe the power of a landing page. And a landing page is, is absolutely packed full of power because it concentrates people on a single course of action. And just quickly, why it is important. Um, on, uh, I work a lot with Etsy people, so I know a lot about Etsy. On an Etsy page, before you get to the footer at the bottom, on your product page, there are 70 external links seven zero external links wow. so that is that is 70 reasons why somebody might not buy your product yeah or they might love your product you know oh no, this is fantastic oh but look click link click Ooh, I've chasing gone. a butterfly something to do yeah. so if you have um a, a page with, which has just got that product it's got nothing else on it other than that product you're saving yourself the 70 potential reasons why someone might leave that page so I like to call landing pages power pages just, just purely because landing page just gives it a, a, an analytical term. Yeah, um, it's just a where, place to land and it could be crappy and have none of the tools. Now guys, this is what I've learned a lot from all these digital marketing people is there's a lot more to a landing page than you think. Like when I learned about SEO, just the different headings, one, two, three, four, I mean, using the keywords, I didn't know any of that because nobody taught me any of that stuff. So the, a power page can be a complete non-power page if it's not set up correctly, can't it? Yeah, it can. And again, um, some of the things are counterintuitive. So um, like when I first started making pages, then I'd want a page to look very nice. So I had my, my brand colors and I would have my button that would be, you know, in my brand colors. Well, of course, you don't want to do that. You want to have your color, your your, your button, so it's actually con completely contrasting with the rest of the page. You know, but you've got lovely sort of um, purples and blues, and you want your your button to be orange. And the, as a designer, that just feels so wrong. But it's 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 because it's wrong. It's right because right. it, it, it's going to jump out at people, and it's going to make them want to go and and, and click that button. But uh, you know, again, that that that's something that. In, when we know it's obvious, but if we don't know, it's counterintuitive. Right. You, you don't know what you don't know. That's why I love it when you guys put together these courses for people because they don't know that stuff. They be, you know, and guess what? If that graphics designer, they're going to remember your website. <laughs> if you put an orange button and they're like, oh, I can't stand it. Did you see that website that Kate put together? Thank you. Send more leads. <laughs> All righty. Kate, I'm just going to mute for a second because my parents are calling and I could be something serious. So just okay. talk for a minute. You can go through that. Uh, right. Okay. What else um, were we going to talk about? Um, actually, I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about power pages, actually, because um, I think there's something that is very much uh, underused. And something that we can do if we use something like Builderall is that we can use Builderall to create our pages and link them to, to other websites. And quite often I see people, um, I see debates in, in the Facebook groups, uh, WordPress or Builderall, which is better. And the fact is that it needn't be one or the other, that we can actually use, uh, we can build our, our landing pages in Builderall and actually attach them to WordPress sites as subdomains. So uh, we needn't think of it being a case of either or. So we can use the, uh, the power and the flexibility of something like Buildwall to produce our, our sales pages and our, our power pages, and then just attach them to our WordPress site, which might, might be better for other things. Um, thank you for letting me get that. Yeah, I needed to. Um, I did put the wrong price here. It is normally 250, but for this special, I'll go change that 
right away. Unless you guys want to give her 250, she don't care. <laughs> So guys, I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Please do go to Kate's page and grab her uh, thank you gift. If you have any questions at all, feel free to go to our Get Seen, Get Lead Summit page and we will answer any of your questions. The whole team is out there and they will answer your questions. If you have something specific for Kate, we wanna make sure you understand what you're getting and that you're happy about what you're getting, but we're really passionate to help you get online, to get seen and to get your leads because that's how your business is going to explode. Thank you, Kate, you've been wonderful. Great presentation, packed with information. Thank you so much. I'll have the replay up uh, within about two hours. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.